Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Etta Chapter Viewers. In this video, I'm gonna go over everything that was discussed today at WWDC 2017. So let's get right into this. The first thing that Apple talked about today on stage was the Apple TV and that Amazon Prime video is coming to it. That's pretty much all they said about that. Uh, so nothing much on Apple TV, uh, although uh, Tim Cook did say you'll be hearing a lot more about tvOS later this year. Next up was watchOS 4. And watchOS 4 uh, brings a few new things like a Siri watch face, kaleidoscope face, and a few other cool things with um, activities. There are new monthly activity challenges. They've enhanced the workout app for the Apple Watch. And they redesigned the music app on the Apple Watch to make it a better experience now with better artwork and playlist images and support for multiple playlists. WatchOS 4 also has a new vertical dock and you can pick a playlist that automatically starts with your workout. Uh, when you're in a workout, you can swipe to the left and control the music directly in the app. And that's pretty much it for the watch. Uh, so watchOS 4 is gonna be cool, but, but it was definitely not the star of the show today. Next up were the Macs. So the first thing that Apple talked about today was the new version of Sierra. Now there's not a full new version of macOS Sierra. Um, they're calling it macOS High Sierra. I don't know who picked that name, but it sounds absolutely stupid as fuck. But, uh, and they made a few um, weed jokes in there. But anyway, supposedly Apple's been working on perfecting Sierra. So that's why they kind of called it High Sierra. So it's like the next version of Sierra. And it's got a cool, it's got a lot of cool features like Safari now has autoplay blocking so that when you go to a news website, you know how the video is always autoplay and crap. It's so annoying. You can block that automatically. It also has intelligent tracking prevention. Uh, it uses machine learning to identify trackers, segregate the cross-site scripting data, and basically stop them from tracking you across the web, which is awesome. The mail app now has full screen split view, which is awesome. And the photos app now has great new organizational and editing tools. And possibly one of the biggest things is that APFS, Apple File System, is now coming to the Mac with Mac OS High Sierra. So it's gonna be just like the iPhone, which has which APFS. Has uh, now the Mac is gonna have it as well, which is going to accelerate so much stuff. Like copying files and stuff is just instantaneous. They showed a little demo of it. It was freaking awesome. Next up, Metal 2, which is basically 10 times faster than Metal 1, which was 10 times faster than the previous. So basically 100 times faster throughput than two generations ago. There's also a Metal Developer Kit with a TB3 enclosure and AMD Radeon RX 580 plus USB-C hub that's available starting today, which you guys can get if you are a developer and you want to have some graphics intensive apps that you want to design and develop. And Mac OS High Sierra is available today to developers. Book beta will be available in late June and then a free upgrade for everyone in the fall. Next up were new iMac models. Uh, they said that this is the best Mac display ever with 500 nits, and it's up to 43% brighter with 1 billion colors. They also updated them with the new Intel Cabby Lake processors with 10-bit HEVC decode. You can get up to 32 gigs of RAM on the 21.5 inch iMac and up to 64 gigs of RAM on the 27 inch iMac. And the Fusion Drive is standard on all 27 inch iMac configurations and high end 21.5 inch iMac. Up to 50% faster SSDs with up to two terabytes of storage, two Thunderbolt three ports on the back, next generation graphics, Intel Iris Plus 640, integrated graphics, and up to 80% faster than previous generations. And they've got discrete graphics on the 21 and a half inch iMac for the first time ever uh, in the 4K model, which is awesome. The 27 inch iMac 5K models will also gain upgraded AMD Radeon Pro chips, the 570, 575, and 580 GPUs with up to eight gigs of VRAM. And then they did a little VR demo, which was kind of corny, but cool to show off some of the capabilities. And the 21 and a half inch iMac starts at $1,099. And the 4K 21 and a half inch iMac starts at $1,300, well, 1299. And the 5K 27 inch iMac starts at 1799. And then they kind of glossed over the MacBook Pros, which I found kind of lame. Like I blinked for a minute because I was at work and I looked back and they were done with it. So basically all they did today uh, were the Intel KB Lake processors uh, that are coming to, to the new 12 inch MacBook and MacBook Pro up to 50% faster SSDs, faster standard graphics on the 15 inch MacBook Pro as well. They kind of just threw in there. They mentioned that the MacBook Air is getting a bump in megahertz too. So I guess it's not dead. Like I said, it would be uh, so much for that Foxconn leaker guy, but it's basically dead. They just bumped the megahertz. Don't get a MacBook Air. The 12 inch MacBook starts at 1299. 13 inch MacBook Pro with function keys starts at 1299 or 1799 with touch bar. And then the 15 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar starts at $2,399. Uh, I'm probably going to be getting uh, one of the newer 15 inch MacBook Pros, probably the maxed out one, at, which is like $2,799. I just won't max out the uh, CPU. All of the new MacBook, MacBook Pro and MacBook Air models begin shipping today. So you guys can go check those out. And then something kind of out of left field. I think this is going to be replacing the Mac Pro, which is crazy, but there's a new iMac Pro. As I said, a seriously badass space gray finish with a gorgeous 5K display. That's, that's their words, not mine. But just looking at this, it looks awesome. It's the most powerful Mac ever. It's workstation class performance, greater than 80% increase in cooling capacity, yet still quiet. They claimed it was an up to an eight core Xeon processor, but that was actually just a tease. There's another There's one with 10 core Xeon processor and then 
a crazy 18 core Xeon processor, which is absolutely insane. So anyone who was bitching about Apple not being for the pro users are now, well, can't really say much anymore. Comes with Radeon Vega graphics up to 16 gigs of VRAM, up to 22 teraflops of half precision computation. The iMac Pro is configurable with up to 128 gigabytes of ECC RAM. And on it, there is going to be four Thunderbolt 3 ports and built in 10 gigabit ethernet port, which is crazy. There's also gonna be a 1080p FaceTime camera, Visa mount option, real-time 3D rendering, high frame rate with immersive VR, real-time 4K video and audio effects, and faster code compiling. This Mac iMac Pro starts at $4,999 and it's not available yet, it will be available in December. Next up, iOS 11. Craig Federighi got back on the stage to discuss this. Uh, and the first thing that he mentioned was that uh, iMessage is getting redesigned app drawer that makes it easier to use the stickers. So that was the first thing he talked about. Eh, I think he could have found something else better. But anyways, that did need uh, a new makeover. So that's awesome to hear about. Uh, iMessage uh, is also getting optimized device storage and smaller and faster backups on iOS and macOS with messages being stored and synced in the cloud across devices. Not totally on board with this. This basically means they're going to upload all of your iMessage you know, text conversations to the cloud, and it's only gonna store a few of them on your device that it thinks you need, uh, which is kind of crazy to think about just having all of your text and stuff up in the cloud, but it is what it is. So maybe you should think about deleting your messages more often. But anyways, that's with iCloud. So it's cool if you get a new device, just sign in, all your messages come over, kind of cool. Another thing that I'm actually really excited about and will probably get me to use Apple Pay for the first time ever is that there's gonna be person-to-person -person payments in iOS 11 uh, and it's integrated straight into the messages app, which is crazy. So you can just pay someone straight through iMessage, through Apple's secure uh, ecosystem and you don't really have to worry about anything. Shouldn't be any fees. So that's awesome to hear about. Also in iOS 11, Siri is gaining a new voice powered by deep learning techniques and it sounds a lot more natural, both the male and female. Um, I think the female sounds a little bit more natural than the male, but still good nonetheless. Also, Siri's getting a beta translation feature like English to Chinese, French, German, Italian, Spanish, and more languages coming in the months to come. And it will now use on-device learning. So it'll basically better understand what you want. Syncs across all of the user's Apple device with end-to-end -end encryption. There's a new depth API for developers. Next up, something that I am very, very excited about, and that is that now Control Center is one page, which is freaking awesome. You can now 3D touch on the different toggles to get different options, which is awesome. Just like some jailbreak tweaks, but still great that Apple's actually doing what people want. We just wanted one page because we were tired of swiping between the two. It gets confusing, so this is awesome. There's also a slightly redesigned lock screen, which actually looks a little bit confusing. I don't know if I have a video here to show you what they did in the conference, but if they swipe down from the top, instead of getting your normal notifications, you get like the lock screen and then you swipe up to see the rest. It's really weird and bizarre, um, but I'm sure it's something people will get used to. Live photos is getting improvements. Memories can now identify photos of and videos of pets. Series getting smarter. Apple Maps has detailed floor plans and sh for shopping malls in Boston, Chicago, Hong Kong, London, and several other major cities with more to come. They're also getting detailed floor plans for major airports. Apple Maps is getting lane guidance and Apple Maps will now display posted speed limits as well, which is really cool. Now, something that I think is definitely useful uh, is a new optional do not disturb while driving feature to stop distracted driving, which I think is great. Uh, basically what it does is, well, there's a bunch of stuff that it can do, but basically if someone texts you while you're in do not disturb while driving, it will text them back with an auto reply saying that they are driving and they can't get to the phone right now. So that's awesome. It won't, you know, blow up your phone or anything. So you, you won't be as distracted. HomeKit support is coming to speakers with Apple's new AirPlay 2 protocol, which has multi-room audio. So you can control that all th straight through HomeKit, which is cool. And then they talked a little bit about Apple Music, which I don't really care about. Um, there wasn't a whole lot, uh, but basically music kit for developers, third-party apps can get full access to Apple Music. Next up is kind of a controversial one. It's the App Store. They actually updated the App Store to have a whole new look. Like it's completely different now. You're not gonna really know what you're doing when you first start into it. Uh, it's crazy how weird it looks. Um, there's a new Today View, which basically shows you, uh, it's a great place to discover different apps that just came out and read stories about the developers who created them. Kind of looks like uh, the music app a little bit, like uh, Apple Music mixed with like news. I don't, I'm not a fan of it because I hate that design to begin with. Well, I don't hate it, but I just don't like it. So we'll see how this goes over. Um, and then there's a dedicated games tab as well as a dedicated apps tab. So I'm not sure how I feel about this, guys. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below on what you guys think about this new App Store revamp. Uh, I know it needed a facelift, but this might be a little bit too much. And then they announced that Monument Valley 2 is out right now, so you guys can go grab that. Then they went and talked more about augmented reality, which I don't care about, but ARKit is coming out with iOS 11. And then they started to talk about the iPad Pro. 
Basically, it's 10 and a half inch screen with slimmer left and right bezels. 10 and a half inch iPad Pro still weighs just one pound. It has a full on-screen keyboard, full size that is. It has a true tone display, wide color gamut, ultra low reflectivity, and up to 600 nits brightness and HDR video. 10 and a half inch and 12.9 inch iPad Pro are getting a 12 core GPU with up to 40% faster graphics performance. And the A10X Fusion chip demo on stage, uh, they used a professional photo editing tool called Affinity Photo. And they were actually comparing that to the i7 processor in computers saying it was faster than those, which is crazy. And if you're wondering about prices, the 10.5 inch and 12.9 inch iPad Pro will start at 64 gigs of base storage. 10.5 inch iPad Pro will start at 649 and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro starts at 799. 256 gigs and 512 gigs uh, storage capacities are available for both models. And they can both be ordered today, available next week. Here's something crazy. The iPad Pro is getting something called the dock. Uh, and it can be summoned from the bottom of the screen to easily switch apps, and apps can be pulled out from the dock into slide overview. And the iPads are getting a redesigned app switcher. They're also getting drag and drop. You can drag images, text URLs, multi-select. Quick type keyboard is more productive. Flick your fingers on keys to get punctuation and more. And then files, uh, it's a new app, ports third-party cloud storage providers such as Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, and Google Drive. And then they kind of demonstrated it a little bit, uh, showing what you can do there. Then they kind of demonstrated the Apple Pencil and Markup, uh, which was kind of neat, but not something I would use. Probably something that college students would like though. iOS 11 developer preview is available today. Public beta, which I will be getting, is going to be available in late June. Then Tim Cook came back on stage and said one last thing to talk to you about, music. And he was talking about how the speakers on the market right now are not that great and that they have something better. And theirs is called the Apple HomePod. So the HomePod, is powered by an A8 chip from the iPhone, which is crazy. Uh, it's a couple years old, but whatever. Has seven beam forming tweeter arrays at the bottom, uh, precision acoustic horns and directional control, and an Apple designed woofer. Basically looks like the trash can Mac Pro, but smaller and it's got like mesh around the sides. It has spatial awareness. Like I said, uses beam forming to direct sound and then they demoed it on stage. And it's designed to work with Apple Music and support Siri for commands playing music with Hey Siri. You can ask it all kinds of different questions. And then they said that the Apple HomePod is not listening or communicating with Apple until you say, hey, Siri. Well, first of all, it has to be listening so they can get, hey, Siri. So that's not true. But I do believe, well, at least I hope to believe that it's not communicating the data to Apple until you say, hey, Siri. And it also says that the data is encrypted and it's anonymized. So take that as you will. Uh, I'm personally not comfortable having an always listening device in my house yet, but that is what it is. It'll start at $349. comes in white and space gray, shipping in December in the US, UK, and Australia. So that's pretty much it. That's everything that happened today at WWDC 2017. Uh, I will have a lot of coverage coming up in the coming weeks on iOS 11, uh, macOS High Sierra, and the new MacBook Pros. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys in the next one. If this video helped you at all, please give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.